Hi, I'm Jeff Parisi. On Saturday, February 19th, 2022, Kathy Joseph from Kathy Loves Physics on YouTube and Jeff Bahari from the Electrotherapy Museum in Palm Beach, Florida, join me for a trip to Bellingham, Washington to visit the Spark Museum and meet the curator and owner, John Jenkins, and see his priceless science book collection. Describing how to make the kite and how to do the kite experiment. Yeah. Right. Um, and and the, so many people think he didn't do it. Yeah. Because because he thought he was draining the clouds of yeah. electricity. This is the whole explanation, a page and a half. Isn't that amazing. This is such a huge part of history. Right. And it's all just one little comment that he sends in this note to Peter. If you open to this page that I have marked here, um, Here's his letter to Peter Collinson, which most of the Peter Collinson. Yeah, Collinson. You were just talking. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't remember his name yeah. because for me, it, it's just the guy who, who started yeah. him on this. Yeah. I didn't actually Esquire. look up anything. Yeah, and his his pipeline for the Royal Society as well. Mm -hmm. this, look at that. Oh, look at it. Ooh. This is the Franklin stove. Uh -huh. Franklin's like a super eclectic guy, so he covers all kinds of stuff. Yeah. The Franklin stove. Uh, some mathematics called the circle of circles and the square of squares. <laughs> um, magic square, magic circles. Uh, yeah. First edition. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god, look at that thing. I love the fact that when this guy owned it, it was 187 years old. Wow. He wrote up, someone wrote a quilt and very rare and curious. Yes. Hey John, when was that book written? 1600. He was, he was a personal physician to Queen Elizabeth I. I hear people consider that to be the first book of science. It's considered the, 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 probably the second most important book of science after uh, Principia, Newton's Principia. Mm -hmm. Way before. I mean, yeah, he keeps also, on talking about how, like, this is a new way of doing things that yeah. we've heard of. I like how much he complains about things, too. Yeah. Miracle mongering. Oh, oh look at look that. At the, uh, <gasps> the reason why it's considered the second most important book in, in science is because he was the first person to really use the scientific method. Uh, you couldn't get away with that at the time because the Catholic Church considered experimentation heresy. Because uh, any, any, anything about the natural yeah, world was no, handed down by the church that from Aristotle. That is, that is one of them. So. One of the most that... historic openings. Don't they? <laughs> don't, uh, didn't they do such a beautiful job with this? Yeah. They were art. I mean, art and science and culture were all one. Yeah. You know? Like, you wouldn't be cultured if you weren't doing science. You think about, you know, in the 400 and some years since this book was published, the hands have gone through and the ideas have stimulated. And... Oh, I mean, um, Galileo wrote about how much he liked Gilbert and how he was inspired mm -hmm. by Gilbert's work on magnets. You'll find a famous woodcut in there of him, uh, of his uh, blacksmith uh, carving out a piece of lodestone into a sphere. Oh, and they put on a string and it would spin around every 24 hours. Oh, that's oh. so cool. And then he was so brave to say, well, I think the earth spins. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I was interested in, okay, well, when I got to Gilbert, how did Gilbert get interested? Uh -huh. And when you read the translation of Gilbert's book, he mentions this uh, Cardano, uh, you probably may have heard of him, but He's the guy who developed, a, he's most famous for developing the third degree quadratic equation solution. It's also incredibly eclectic. Of course, it's all in either Italian or Latin. Uh, Probably so Latin. We would recognize what it is. I think it's Latin, but it might be yeah. Italian. Latin. Yeah. And, um, and it's, you know, it's got a pretty stiff binding now, but, uh, but that's the one that started Gilbert on his path. Which is just, oh my gosh, all of these are such works of art. Yeah, they really are. These it's are so all, beautiful. you know. I mean, look at this. Look at the base. And these are all woodcuts. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
Uh, hey, Kathy, what's the uh, significance behind Maxwell's equations? Why are they important? Oh, gosh. Um, Maxwell's equations are the foundation of physics. They relate all electrical and magnetic equations into 20 relations, which would then change into four relations. And it changes everything from electricity being from electric charges and magnetic things into fields. Well, Maxwell called them fields. Faraday called them lines of force. And um, it's no physicist can call themselves a physicist without struggling through these equations. Yeah, or engineers. Or engineers have to go through it too. Do they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's part of and. After Maxwell's equations, when people start believing in Maxwell's equations, and they call them those Maxwellians, it inspired all of modern physics. Yeah. Because and, and what book is Jeff looking at right now? This is the first printing of his, uh, which one? 1861? 65. 65 is the second paper, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right so, before he died of cancer. Wow, so we're looking at a a first edition book that really sets the fundaments of physics this is onto the page. Up with New Newton's Principia as the one of the foundations of physics. Wow. So this is Hoxby. Oh, didn't know. This is Hoxby? Yeah. Oh, I love Hoxby. Unfortunately, so uh, unless you have an English translation of it, there's not much to see. There's no illustrations in it. Uh, so. This is an original Hawksby? This is an original Hawksby. Yeah. Is this the first one? Globe of glass. Uh, talking about the friction on glass. Wow. Even just like the formatting of it, and it's just, yeah. you can tell that these were labors of love. This is, this is change the world stuff, yeah, the each first, one. The first papers on artificial light. Yeah, I mean, isn't that amazing? People like, who invented the light bulb? It's like Gurkha. Uh, no, not Gurkha, yeah, Oxford. Goxby. Oxford, Sorry, yeah. Gurkha. Okay. All these names are floating in my head. What, what, what? Crazy for me was he, he was started in 1705. I think the book was first published in 1709. And there was this void. And the next person we think of typically is Franklin, you know, doing anything 50 years later, basically. Right. No! The first oh. printing? You're kidding me. What are we looking at, John? This oh is, uh, my the God! First, Look the at first this. First printing of Alessandro Volta's paper on the battery. <gasps> oh my goodness! And yesterday was his birthday. Uh, yeah. That's right. Here's the chain of cups. See the two different metals in the cup of salt water. And there's the different piles. I love how he's like, "Here's how you do one pile. Here's how you do two piles. Here's how you do four piles." Like, yeah, we get it. Like, you don't need the four piles. Should we sing happy birthday to Alessandro? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Why is this part two? Uh, we have the other part over here. Oh my God. Production of a considerable light from uh, attrition of the globe of glass uh, and containing this, an evacuation. Yeah, there and you go. this is from 1800? <laughs> 1800, yeah. I can recognize that picture from a thousand <laughs> miles away. Yeah. <gasps> The amazing thing was frogs were much bigger back then. <laughs> <laughs> My question, what kind of generator was that? That's, it's called a plate machine. Uh, it would be, um, I think it's just a standard French style plate machine. Plate machine. Although, I don't know what this gear is doing. Maybe that's, oh, that's not a gear. I think it's just a collector. Yeah, it's a collector, you're right. It's mm. a collector, yeah. God, look how You missed the conversation this morning of me trying to convince the local science museum when they had a cadaver to, to reanimate oh, it. Oh, yeah. And they kicked me out. <laughs> <laughs> do you have Aldini's book? I do. 
Yeah. Well, it's, in my, it's in my library at home now. I should have yet but... <laughs> we were just talking about Aldini. Yeah, and the illustrations in that one are something else. Something <laughs> at all. Uh, atmospheric electricity. Oh, oh that's brilliant. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready. Awesome! There it is. It's just a little edition. one. Yeah. Oh. And it's the first edition, so it yeah. doesn't have the like the English edition where they just kept on putting all these things like, let's read this other paper and include it so it makes some sense. Yeah. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. There's Umpla. <laughs> oh. There's Tali Umpla. There he is. Master wow. Lurking. I, I can't do that. Wow. And this book, what's the title of this book, John? Mathematical? I'll let Jeff, I'll let Jeff translate it because he speaks German better than I Isn't this something like oh. mathematical theory? Oh, man, she kept it, she kept it, kept it. Kept it. Yeah, this is uh, a gift. So in 1871, uh, Sir William Thompson went to a printer and had a limited edition of facsimiles, complete facsimiles of Principia produced. Uh -huh. And he gave them as gifts to his students, his best students. Uh -huh. And this was one of the copies that he gave. Who did he give it uh, to? We Do don't you know? know, unfortunately. Uh -huh. But this is the order. Um, let's see. Uh -huh. yeah, this is the order from the bookseller. Um, oh, that's really cool. Uh, and. Uh, I'm still mad at myself. This was from Lord Kelvin's library. Uh -huh. it, was it was actually owned by Lord Kelvin. It was in his library. That's really neat. Jeff and Kathy, why is Dufay important? Do you want me to answer? Yeah. Okay. Well, Dufay was important for a couple reasons. First, he had money and power. So when he wrote about electricity, people listened. Second, he was the first person to figure out any laws of electricity that were actual law. He figured out that electric repulsion from neutral objects was because the neutral object was attracted to it, again, got some of the charge, and then was repelled. He also, when trying to prove that, ended up figuring out that there were two kinds of electricity and opposites repel, oh, sorry, opposites attract, like repel, and he added neutrals are attracted because he didn't know neutrals were made of opposites, like charges. And so his words were deeply influential. I mean, if you read the scientists in the 1700s, they're always talking about the rules of Dufay, what Dufay says about it. So uh, Dufay was known for the two, the two uh, fluid theory, Mm -hmm. And he and Franklin kind of battled back and forth. Uh, Franklin was the proponent of the single fluid theory, where you have positive and negative. And uh, Dufay was a proponent of the two fluid theory, where you have two different fluids that represent the effect of positive and negative. It, I mean, but it was more of a symbolic fight, because Dufay yeah. died very young yeah. from um, tuberculosis? I don't know. Something like that. Um, and his student, um, Abbe Nolay, yeah. was the standard bearer of the two. Yeah. And those were the, the I one. I have that... Nolay's papers over here too, by the way. Ah, oh my God, Nolay, Nolay had the best pictures too. Yeah. Nobody yeah, did better pictures. were awesome. <laughs> Speaking of beautiful books, uh, uh -huh. this is one of the most beautiful ones in terms of... Uh, uh, <gasps> oh, look at that thing. What is that? This is 1620. This is... Uh, surf this is a uh, Bacon's book. Ooh. Bacon, as in Sir Francis. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. But look at this. Oh. Somebody had to pen engrave all that. The, wow. the book I have by Thomas Brown. When was that from? On the, 1620. Uh, on the like the. Uh, the. Uh, Everything. Yeah. Uh, he, he was disproving uh, all of the superstitions at the time. Uh -huh. It was 1640s, but the same thing. Every page with every every text changed. So many languages referenced. Yeah. I mean, just thinking of the yeah. how the, to do the book prints for those pages. 
or, or block yes, this. Many, many people at that time seem to be multilingual, much more than now. Mm. Wow. Well, Hertz, that's a familiar name. Mm hmm. And this is not only has his discovery of radio waves, but also the photoelectric effect, yeah. which is the okay. ultraviolet light can create electricity, but visible light cannot. Work. 